I, 28 years old, was with my partner, 28 years old, for six years. I forgave him for cheating on me after the first year. I wanted to end things immediately, but he begged me to stay and did everything he could to prove himself to me. And the last few years have been really good together. I built some trust back with him, but he started being too friendly with a coworker, and she was having inappropriate conversations with him. There were multiple instances that gave me a bad gut feeling. He said he would cut it off if I was uncomfortable. I said I was, so he told me that he had a conversation with her to end their friendship, and they haven't spoken in months. He proposed nine months ago, and we've been planning our wedding. Things started feeling off between us. I asked him why, and he broke down, crying, telling me he feels the same way. He thought the feeling would just go away. He said he wanted to fight for us and work on things. We had been numbing our feelings after work because I would drink two, three times a week, and he would get stoned every day. We agreed we both had things we needed to work on. We would be completely sober. We went on a date to the movies and dinner, but I found out he got high before we left. It hurt because he went behind my back and against what we agreed to. We argued the next morning over a TV show and I felt like the relationship was over. He had been arguing with me over the smallest things for a while, which is why I felt something was wrong in the first place. I was living with him for the past six years because I moved in right away. When we started dating, we were always inseparable. I started to think about packing, wondering where I would go. I felt in my gut he had feelings for someone else. A day later, I went through his phone. He never leaves it out, but did this day while taking a shower. I found a selfie of him smirking with the coffee, so I assumed he sent it to someone. Then I found four selfies of the other girl, his coworker, making funny faces, so clearly they were flirting. When I confronted him, he said, she took the selfies on his phone when he put it down somewhere. I told him I couldn't do this anymore. I don't trust him or believe him and I'm done. While grabbing boxes, he was trying to stop me and wanted to talk more. He tried to flip everything around on me, saying I don't have a career and he doesn't think I have the motivation to have one in the future. He works at Costco. I work as a nanny for my nieces because their mother, my sister, is not in their life. I won't abandon them and their father pays me well. He only makes like $500 more than I do. He's never supported me financially besides groceries. I pay all of my own bills and he pays his. I've planned on going to school but had a lot of unexpected health issues thrown at me last year, so things were really hard on both of us, but he was very supportive. I just had double jaw surgery and I'm still recovering, so I'm not sure when he expected me to start school during all of this. Either way, I was insulted that he has no faith in me and would want to leave me for this. I told him his love is conditional for me because I never judged him for his choice of career. And I wanted to marry him no matter what, because I love him. He said it hurt him to hear that. He left for a few hours and came back crying and told me, I'm such an amazing person. But he fell out of love with me at some point. I knew it was over then. He was always so crazy about me and fought for me until now. Over the next few days, I continued packing, but we would have deep conversations every night. And he opened up to me, saying he has commitment issues. He's sorry for not communicating and he doesn't want this to be the end of us. He wants a break so he can work on himself and be a better man for me. I told him I don't see why we would need to be broken up for that. We can do counseling together. He's pretty clear he needs to do this on his own, but he wants me to wait for him. I told him I don't think I can do that. Fast forward a couple days, he went to a friend's graduation party out of town and I went to a quinceanera. I was very upset that night because all I wanted was to be with him and to work on things to stay together. But the next day, while I was waiting for him at home, he said he was going to the park to smoke before coming home. He went to a park 30 minutes away rather than one close to our house, and he was gone over two hours. Ended up being three in total. I knew something was wrong, so I told him I couldn't believe he couldn't wait for me to leave the house before hanging out with someone else. He thought someone saw him there with the other girl, co-worker. So he confessed he was there with her, but he had no idea that she lived nearby. And she randomly saw him there and joined him to lay in the grass. Puke, I said, I'm done and I'm leaving now. My brother and other family came to pick me up with all my things so I could move in with my brother. He came home to say goodbye and was adamant that he just wanted to be alone at the park. It was all a coincidence. And he still doesn't want this to be the end of us. It's been a week and 
I haven't been able to cut off contact with him. It hurts wondering what he's doing when he's not at home. And I know I need to cut things off, but he still wants to hang on and wants me to come to therapy with him. I'm so torn because my head tells me to run, but my heart still loves him and cares for him deeply. Is he completely playing me or is there a chance for us? To add, I've read every comment and appreciate all of them. I just wanted to add that the coworker 100% knows we were together. I met her a couple times, they've had many conversations about me, and she helped him check my engagement ring to make sure it was real. Anytime he called me and she was there, she would overly compliment me and say how pretty I was, and that she loved my hair darker, etc. It was over the top, which was my first red flag. She is very religious, a virgin until marriage, doesn't wear clothes above her ankles, doesn't dye her hair or do her makeup, basically the complete opposite of me. She made a comment to him that she doesn't know why she always likes guys who are taken, and another time said she wanted to do something rash and lose her virginity. I told him that was a completely inappropriate thing to tell you, and she very obviously likes you. He makes it seem like I'm just jealous for no reason, and his mommy told him, it's okay to have female friends. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, there is a chance if you are willing with open eyes to accept the fact that he cheats on you and will continue to cheat on you and that he meets women in parks and gives you such a lame excuse that it should insult your intelligence. And he lies to you about his drug use and he badgers you and belittles you. You can love him, but that won't magically make him a decent partner. If you are good with all of the above, sure. But know this, you will get exactly what you are getting now. He will not change. He will not be better. Believe what his actions are telling you, telling you. So from this point forward, and if you stay with him knowing what you know, any pain you suffer from this relationship will be self-inflicted. Good luck, OP. Comment two, your last paragraph is the key one. You're saying you're torn because your heart and your head are in different places. But put it like this. If you stay with him, that decision is 99% heart, 1% head. In short, it's blind to the facts and just dumb. Do you really believe he warrants overruling everything you know to that extent? Saying, I'm following my heart in these situations is just a cop out of doing the hard but infinitely smarter thing of cutting your losses. He's literally playing you for a fool if you stay with him now, he knows you're a fool to be played and will continue to do so. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. So after moving in with my brother, I tried to focus on myself and my recovery from the surgery. But things took a turn I wasn't expecting. Three days ago, I got a call from my ex. He sounded frantic and said he needed to talk to me in person. I hesitated but agreed to meet him at a nearby cafe. When I got there, he looked like he hadn't slept in days. He told me that his coworker, the one he had been too friendly with, had been spreading lies about him at work. She claimed that he had been harassing her and making unwanted advances. He was suspended pending an investigation. I was shocked, but also felt a bit of vindication. I knew she was trouble from the start. He begged me to help him, saying that if I could just talk to his boss and explain that she was the one pursuing him, it might help his case. I told him I needed to think about it and left. On my way home, I couldn't help but feel conflicted. Part of me wanted to help him because I still cared, but another part of me felt like this was his mess to clean up. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept replaying our conversation in my head. The next morning, I decided to call his boss. I explained everything I knew about their interactions and how she had been the one making inappropriate comments. His boss thanked me for the information, but said they needed to conduct a thorough investigation. Later that day, I got a call from my sister. She told me that my ex had shown up at her house, drunk and crying. He was begging her to convince me to take him back. She was furious and told him to leave. I felt a mix of anger and sadness. Why couldn't he just leave me alone? The following day, I got a text from my ex. He said he was sorry for everything and that he was checking into a rehab facility to get help for his substance abuse issues. He asked if I could visit him while he was there. I didn't respond. That evening, I went out with some friends to try and take my mind off things. While we were out, I ran into an old friend from high school. We started talking, and it 
It felt good to reconnect with someone who knew me before all this drama. We exchanged numbers and made plans to hang out again. The next day, I got a call from my ex's mom. She was crying and said that he had been in a car accident on his way to the rehab facility. He was in the hospital with a broken leg and some other injuries. She asked if I could come see him. I felt a pang of guilt and agreed to go. When I got to the hospital, he had looked so vulnerable lying there. He apologized again and said he realized how much he had hurt me. He asked if we could try to work things out once he was better. I told him I needed time to think. Over the next few days, I visited him a couple more times. Each time, he seemed more sincere in his apologies and his desire to change. But I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just another cycle of promises and disappointments. One night while I was at home, I got a call from my old high school friend. We talked for hours, and it felt so refreshing to have a conversation that wasn't about my ex or our problems. He asked if I wanted to go to a concert with him the next weekend, and I agreed. The next day, I went to visit my ex in the hospital again. He seemed more upbeat and told me that his boss had called and said they were leaning towards believing his side of the story. He thanked me for talking to his boss and said he couldn't have done it without me. I felt a mix of relief and frustration. Why did he always need me to fix his problems? As I was leaving the hospital, I ran into his coworker in the parking lot. She looked at me with a smug smile and said, I guess you're not as important to him as you thought. I was taken aback and asked her what she meant. She told me that he had been texting her from the hospital, saying he missed her and couldn't wait to see her again. My heart sank. I confronted him about it the next day. He denied it at first, but eventually admitted that he had been in contact with her. He said he was confused and didn't know what he wanted. That was the last straw for me. I told him I was done for good and walked out. Since then, I've been focusing on myself and spending more time with my old high school friend. It's been pretty tough of emotions, but I'm starting to see that I deserve better. My ex is still in the hospital and I haven't visited him since our last conversation. I've blocked his number and told my family not to give him any information about me. I'm trying to move on and build a life that doesn't revolve around his drama. It's not easy, but I know it's the right thing to do. Thanks for reading. For Am I the idiot for telling my boyfriend to clean up or get out? A 24-year-old female have been with my boyfriend, 24-year-old male, for over a year. Two months into dating, I noticed that his hygiene was really bad, and it affected the way I felt about him. His feet always smell so bad, his shoes are almost radioactive. He showers every other day at best, sometimes once every four, five days. I never saw him brush his teeth, although he owns a toothbrush. He doesn't wash his hands before or after eating. He eats in bed and drops food, etc. I broke up with him because if you're an adult and you have poor hygiene, it's almost impossible to change. We talked about it and he made efforts to shower every day, clean his teeth, cut his nails, etc. And we got back together. Months later, I noticed he slowly became worse and worse. It's something that we often fight about because when I say anything about it to him, he says that I'm too critical and I am parenting him and gets hurt because I use the words disgusted. Today, we had a huge fight about this. He moved away just for a month for a job, and I went to visit him from Friday until today. When I met up with him, he had just finished work and smelled horrible. His nails were long and dirty underneath, and his hands were dirty. I thought, okay, I'll cut him some slack since he's coming back from work. We went to the hotel, and he just collapsed on the bed with his sweaty, dirty clothes and took a nap. His shoes smelled even worse than what I'm used to. I took a shower, and when I was done, I woke him up from the nap so we could go out. He didn't shower. The next day, he went to work. When I met up with him in the afternoon, he smelled even worse than the previous day. I don't know how his co-workers are able to stand it. And we went out with some of them to a thermal spa, so we swam all evening. And the smell was gone. At the end, we decided to shower there, but it was unexpected, so I didn't have soap. I borrowed some from his coworker, and then I realized later my boyfriend just showered with water. The next day, he didn't take a shower either. We woke up around noon and went out since it was his day off. When we came back, I took a shower. Then we ordered some food and had dinner on the bed, which I hate doing, but it was the only way. At one point, I felt overwhelmed. I felt sick because the room smelled so bad. 
a mix of food, dirty clothes, slash sweat. There were flies in the room. There was a mess everywhere. Food crumbs on the carpet and random snack wrappers all around the room. Piles of dirty clothes, etc. When we slept, I just stayed as far as possible from him in bed. The next day, he asked me why I've been acting weird all weekend. And I just told him the truth. He was so upset and we had a fight. He says I'm trying to control him. He doesn't understand that I can't be intimate with him on an emotional level if the physical part is missing. And I'm not able to be physically comfortable with him because of his hygiene. I was so repulsed by him this weekend, it's making me reconsider being with him. He says that if I loved him, my feelings wouldn't depend on this. I told him if his hygiene doesn't improve, then we'll have to break up. But he takes it as a threat and says, I'm being manipulative. What can I do now? Now, for a few comments before the update, comment one, girl. To put it plainly and simply, you deserve better. More specifically, you deserve someone who cares about you enough to put effort into making a relationship work. And he clearly isn't willing to do that if he can't keep up with basic hygiene. He probably does have some kind of mental illness that's causing this behavior, but, and I'm going to say it loudly for those in the back, it's not women's job to fix men. Comment two break up and move on with your life. If he doesn't realize, as a fully grown man, that he is responsible for his hygiene, that's his problem. It's gross. Know your self-worth and that you deserve someone better. I mean, isn't basic hygiene kind of the starting point? Now, for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. So, after the big fight we had last weekend, things have been really tense. I decided to give him some space and went back home. We didn't talk much for the first couple of days. Just a few texts here and there. I was still feeling pretty grossed out and needed some time to think. Midweek, he called me out of the blue and sounded really upset. He said he had been thinking a lot about what I said and wanted to meet up to talk things through. I was hesitant, but agreed because I felt like we needed to clear the air. When we met, he looked like he had made an effort. Clean clothes, freshly showered, and even brushed his teeth. It was a relief, but I was still cautious. We sat down at a cafe and he started by apologizing for making me feel uncomfortable. He admitted that he had been neglecting his hygiene and that it was affecting our relationship. He said he wanted to change, but felt overwhelmed and didn't know where to start. I told him that I appreciated his honesty, but that actions speak louder than words. I needed to see consistent effort, not just a one-time thing. He nodded and said he understood. Then he dropped a bombshell. He had been struggling with depression for a while which made it hard for him to take care of himself. He said he didn't want to use it as an excuse, but wanted me to know what he was dealing with. This revelation hit me hard. I felt a mix of emotions, guilt for being so harsh, empathy for his struggle, and confusion about what to do next. I asked him why he hadn't told me earlier, and he said he was embarrassed and didn't want to burden me. He said he felt like he was failing as a boyfriend and didn't want to admit it. We talked for hours, and it felt like we were finally getting somewhere. He promised to seek help for his depression and work on his hygiene. I told him I would support him, but that he needed to take the first steps. We left the cafe feeling a bit more hopeful, but knowing we had a long way to go. The next few days were a mix of ups and downs. He started seeing a therapist and made an effort to shower and brush his teeth daily. But there were still moments when he slipped back into old habits. One evening, I went over to his place, and it was a mess again. Dirty clothes everywhere, dishes piled up, and that familiar smell. I felt a wave of frustration, but tried to stay calm. Day. I reminded him gently about our conversation and asked if he needed help cleaning up. He looked defeated, but agreed. As we cleaned, we talked more about his depression and how it affected his daily life. He opened up about his childhood and how his parents were never really around. He said he never learned good hygiene habits because no one taught him. This gave me a new perspective on his behavior. It wasn't just laziness. It was a lack of guidance and support. One night we were lying in bed and he asked me if I ever felt like I was failing at life. This question caught me off guard and I realized he was feeling really vulnerable. I told him that everyone feels that way sometimes and that it's okay to ask for help. He seemed to relax a bit and thank me for being there for him. But things took a turn when he had a bad day at work. He came home in a foul mood, snapped at me for no reason. 
I tried to be patient, but it was hard. We ended up having another fight and he accused me of not understanding what he was going through. I felt hurt and told him that I was trying my best, but needed him to meet me halfway. The next day he apologized and said he was just really stressed. He promised to work on managing his stress better and not take it out on me. I told him that I needed to see real change, not just promises. He agreed and said he would keep going to therapy and try to be more mindful of his actions. As the week went on, I noticed small improvements. He started setting reminders on his phone to shower and brush his teeth. He also began cleaning up his place more regularly. It wasn't perfect, but it was progress. I felt a glimmer of hope, but knew we still had a lot of work to do. One evening we were watching a movie and he turned to me and said, I really want to make this work. I know I have a lot to fix, but I don't want to lose you. This was the first time he had expressed his feelings so openly and it made me realize how much he cared. I told him that I wanted to make it work too, but that we needed to keep communicating and supporting each other. As we move forward, I'm cautiously optimistic. I know it's not going to be easy and there will be setbacks, but I feel like we're finally on the same page and working towards a common goal. It's going to take time and effort from both of us, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for refusing to let my boyfriend turn our relationship into a circus? Me and my boyfriend have been dating for a little over two months, and our relationship so far is pretty good up till now. He recently told in passing conversation, he wants to have a threesome. I ask why, and he told me it's one of his fantasies. I of course shut that down because that's not how I roll. If I'm in a relationship with you, you are my person. End of discussion. Then he proceeded to tell me he thought I would be down because I'm not straight. Shocked, I tell him, just because I'm attracted to other genders doesn't mean I'll sleep with multiple people. That's very different. Then he let out that the person he was thinking about doing the threesome with was one of our coworkers. I immediately say absolutely not because that's a disaster waiting to happen. Pouting, he drops the conversation. Now for an update. Today he went from wanting a threesome to wanting another girlfriend. We were at his mom's talking about work and the other coworkers there. When he brings up this girl, we'll call her A. I don't know A very well, but working with her is nice. I have nothing against A. He begins to tell me he sees us and A having a relationship together. I asked him why, and his reason was that he sees himself as an amazing man and that he wants to build the connection me and him have with someone else. He wants me to be a part of it and okay with it. I told him no, he's in a committed relationship with me. He then fires back with, well, I personally find A attractive, just like how I find you attractive. At this point, I'm in utter disbelief. He then says, is it wrong to think other people are attractive? I say no, plus it's wrong to assume I'd be okay with you getting in relationships with other girls and just expect me to be okay with it. He then says he wants to get to know other people on a more intimate level. I tell him there are other ways he could do that, make friends. But that just went right over his head. He then says that if we were to ask A, she would be on board with it because he thinks she likes him. Because why wouldn't she? At this point, I'm practically speechless. Then later that same night we got on the phone and talked about it some more. At this point, I'm in tears, practically telling him that the fact that he wants to get intimate with someone else makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong as a girlfriend. He then tells me no, I'm an amazing girlfriend and that he loves me. I fire back with, if he loved me, he wouldn't say, shoot like this to me. He would see me for who I am and not try to find someone else to have fun with just because he thinks he deserves it. He then tells me I'm not being fair. So am I being unfair? To add, I'm a little new to Reddit, so bear with me. I wanted to take the time to clear up a few things. For starters, I wanna say I did not meet my boyfriend at work. We met through a dating website. He started working with me a little after we made it official. And to those people who think he is possibly polyamorous, he is most definitely not. I actually brought up that notion and he didn't see himself as that. Also, when we first met on that dating site, his profile said monogamous. I even took some of your advice and mentioned a man to have a threesome with or another boyfriend. And just as I thought he saw that as gross, he didn't see anything wrong with it being a woman since I'm not straight. As of right now, I have not broken off with him yet.
because he is being very good about not mentioning it since the last time we talked about it. I got very firm with him one night and flat out told him not to mention it to me. He then said he would ask A just to see if she would be down and to also prove me wrong. I told him to go for it because I know she has a brain in her head and she would never say yes to that ridiculous request. I'll update you all once I find out what she says. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. You're two months in and he wants that. Girl, sorry, not sorry. This guy doesn't love you. I would leave because if you're not going to agree to that one way or another, he will definitely cheat. Comment two, dump his sorry butt. If he wants polygamy or a threesome, he should be single or date other people. You said it yourself. You're a monogamy type of girl. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments from the last post. So here's what happened next. The day after our last conversation, my boyfriend actually went ahead and asked A if she would be interested in joining us in a relationship. I found out because A came up to me at work, looking really uncomfortable. She pulled me aside and asked if we could talk. She told me that my boyfriend had approached her and asked if she would be interested in being in a relationship with both of us. She said she was really flattered but also very confused and uncomfortable because she didn't see either of us that way. She apologized if she had done anything to give him the wrong idea but I assured her that she hadn't. I was mortified and furious at the same time. I thanked her for being honest with me and told her I would handle it. That night, I confronted my boyfriend about it. I told him that A had come to me and told me everything. He seemed genuinely surprised that she had said no, and even more surprised that she had told me about it. He tried to defend himself by saying he was just trying to prove a point, but I wasn't having any of it. I told him that he had crossed a line and that I felt completely disrespected. He apologized and said he didn't realize how much it would hurt me. But I told him that wasn't good enough. I needed time to think about what I wanted to do next. The next day at work was awkward, to say the least. A and I tried to act normal, but there was definitely some tension. I could tell she felt bad about the whole situation, and I didn't want her to feel that way. I decided to take a break and went outside to get some fresh air. While I was out there, I ran into another coworker who we'll call B. B, and I have always gotten along well, and he could tell something was bothering me. He asked if I was okay, and I ended up telling him everything that had happened. He listened and offered some really good advice. He told me that I needed to do what was best for me and not worry about what anyone else thought. He also said that if my boyfriend couldn't respect my boundaries, then he wasn't worth my time. That night, I decided to have one last conversation with my boyfriend. I told him that I needed to know if he was willing to be in a monogamous relationship with me or if he still wanted to pursue other people. He hesitated for a moment, but then said that he loved me and wanted to be with me. He promised that he wouldn't bring up the idea of a threesome or another girlfriend again. I told him that I needed to see actions, not just words. He agreed and said he would do whatever it took to make things right. Over the next few days, things started to get better. My boyfriend was more attentive and seemed genuinely sorry for what had happened. He even went out of his way to do little things to show me that he cared. I started to feel like maybe we could get past this and move forward. However, there was still a part of me that was unsure. I couldn't shake the feeling that he might bring it up again in the future. One night, we were having dinner at his place when he brought up something from his past that I hadn't known about. He told me that he had been in a relationship before where his partner had cheated on him. He said that it had really messed him up and made him question his worth. He admitted that he had been trying to recreate a situation where he felt in control and desired by more than one person. It was a bit of an aha moment for me because it helped me understand where he was coming from. I told him that I appreciated his honesty but that it didn't excuse his behavior. He agreed and said he was willing to go to therapy to work through his issues. I decided to give him another chance, but I made it clear that this was his last one. If he ever brought up the idea of being with someone else again, I would end things for good. He promised that he wouldn't, and that he would do whatever it took to make our relationship work. In the meantime, I also decided to focus on myself and my own happiness. I started spending more time with friends and doing things that I enjoyed. I even took up a new hobby, which helped take my mind off of everything that had happened. It felt good to have something that was just for me. As for A, things eventually went back to normal between us. 
We had a heart-to-heart -heart one day after work, and I assured her that I didn't blame her for anything. She told me that she respected me for standing up for myself, and that she was glad we could still be friends. It was a relief to have that conversation and to know that we could move past the awkwardness. So that's where things stand right now. My boyfriend and I are still together, and he's been making a real effort to show me that he's committed to our relationship. I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm also prepared to walk away if he ever crosses that line again. Thanks for reading and for all the support. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.